Hey guys, this video is on acid-base disorders. This video may be more of a reference to you since it goes into a little bit more detail than is what's probably going to be tested on step one, but I think it's valuable to understand it to this level so that when they ask it in a weird way or you forget some of the details, that you'll still be able to pick it apart and understand what they're asking. So let's start with a couple important points. I'm assuming you already know the basics of acid-base already and how respiratory versus metabolic disorders work. So first, Metabolic disorders are defined by abnormal HCO3. That is, you can't have metabolic acidosis or alkalosis without a deranged HCO3. And I clarify this because even if you're adding external acids or bases that aren't HCO3, uh, like some other ion, those external ions are going to equilibrate with the body to make or destroy HCO3. So whatever metabolic acid base problem you have, whether you're overdosing on aspirin or drinking methanol, it'll show up in the HCO3. That was something that I personally was unsure about uh, at the time of taking step one. Second, know that HCO3 or, and PCO2 always compensate in the same direction. This is a handy trick to remember. If you think it through, it really makes sense. I'll leave that to you guys. Third, the only compensation calculation you'll need, if ever, for step one is Winter's formula. This describes how much HCO3 and PCO2 compensate for one another when a singular disorder occurs. This is really important in the upcoming discussion. So really quick, that's just PCO2 equals 1.5 times HCO3 plus 8. And that's just plus or minus 2, whatever you get there. All right, now, let's take a look at this diagram I drew up really quick. We're using the example of a metabolic acidosis where HCO3 is low at 16. Therefore, we'd expect PCO2 to also go down to compensate. To find out exactly how much, we use Winter's formula. 1.5 times 16 is 24, which adds 8 to get 32. So that means we'd expect PCO2 to be somewhere between 30 and 34. That's a normal finding in the context of our pathology. Notice that our new normal is below the normal lab value range for PCO2, which is 33 to 45. It's a really important concept. You can almost discard the normal values of PCO2 and HCO3- minus once you've established that there's an acid-base disorder. Now, we said that any PCO2 between 30 and 34 is normal given the context of our underlying disorder. That means that greater than 34 is abnormal, and so is less than 30. In fact, if we get PCO2 values out of these ranges, we know we have a superimposed second pathology. If it's greater than 34, then we also have a respiratory acidosis. If it's less than 30, we also have a respiratory alkalosis. This is really the entire trick to understanding mixed disorders. This is how you identify an asthmatic with a respiratory acid-base disorder and an underlying lactic acidosis, which would otherwise kind of cancel out or add together to look like one pathology. It's also how you deduce aspirin toxicity because of the classic respiratory alkalosis and metabolic acidosis. So I hope I kept this simple for you guys. Let me know if it helped. Thanks.